Hello everybody and welcome back to the DCAC channel. Today we are going to be solving another lead code question. I guess the people that are into the programming videos uh, are lucky again. So, hmm, interesting. That sounds like something that shouldn't be easy, right? Find words that can be formed by characters. I guess we'll quickly check it. Um, or maybe this one, the parity too type of question hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. so I was kind of scrolling and I think I <laughs> I ended on this one and it sounds like something interesting that I haven't done in Python yet uh, I'm assuming we'll be working with binary numbers and or at least binary representations of the integers so let's see um, Given an integer array error out of integers, right? Uh, you have to sort the integers in the array in ascending order by the number of ones in their binary representation. And in case of two or more integers, uh, in case that two or more integers have the same number of ones, you have to sort them in ascending order. But uh, okay. So I guess uh, if we end up with the same integer, um, the same amount of uh, ones, I have to actually go back to the integer representation and then work with that. Sounds cool. Let's see. Uh, this is our input array. The output would look like this explanation. Zero is the only integer with uh, yeah, with uh, zero bits or zero, one, one bits, yeah. One, two, four, and eight all have one bit. And they have to be also sorted like this, right? Uh, according to, to their decimal representation. And uh, these guys all have two bits and this one has three bits. All right. Um, so the sorted array by bits is this. Um, Whoa, well, that's, that's a lead code question and it's easy. Hmm. Maybe I'm not thinking about it properly and maybe it's really easy. Who knows? Um, how would I find out? For example, let's think about this just quickly. If we have all those numbers here, right? We know that one would be represented as uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Uh, two would be Zero, 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 one zero four would be like uh, one zero zero and the other one eight would be something like that so i'm seeing a pattern because the other ones that have the two mm, no wouldn't work like that <laughs> uh, the other ones will have two bits for example three would have the one Let's, let's let's plot them because uh, looking at the data in in its uh, in the, the form that you'll be working with it is also pretty helpful. I think that's the five, right? We have one uh, and a four exactly, and then the six would be uh, one, uh, well, two, four, two and the zero here how can we see an order um we could be looking at the number we could be sorting them yeah i guess according to subarrays uh, other than that i don't see any way i can order them all at the same time because this will be basically a one this would be a ten this would be a hundred if i look at them just just like this this would be a thousand and then this would be a 11 right there's no way I, I could actually put the 11 after the 1000 if I'm sorting them like like this so I'll definitely have to work with separating them and I guess that's not an issue um, what I could do let's have a hash map and uh, our hash map would be something like it would contain all the different array frequencies. So it will be uh, frequency 
frequency lists and this will be our empty hash map and now for each hmm how can we do this for element in our array even let's call it element or for number in our array um, we want to see it's a binary representation so let me quickly google this so we could format it like this i don't know yeah this would be the input right 37 let's see um we will have our binary num when we are doing uh, was it something like this yes dot format our num and now we have it as a string and now we will basically um, we could split it we could also I could also split I guess if I'm splitting what will I, will I get if I'm getting uh, if I have something like and, and, and I'll tell you why splitting what will also work. I, the only thing I need from this operation here is to only see how many how many ones I have. And um, if I split, I'll get something like this and something like this, right? Um, I'll be splitting on the one. Well, not exactly right. Uh, let's see. If I split on the one, yeah, I will basically get this, this, and this. If I was, if it was like this, if I split on the one, hmm, not cool. This is our binary num, binary frequency. Let's uh, have it as um, some. Was it? I can just sort them out, I guess. Um, bit for bit in binary num if bit is equal to one. Um, this will basically give me all the bits and then I'll basically just do the length of that and this will give me the amount of bits that are there. So what we'll be doing now, now we already have our binary representation and um, And we have, hmm, I don't even need the binary representation afterwards, right? Because I will be putting everything into different classes. Um, the class will be defined by the num binary frequency, uh, or actually let's call it bit frequency. And let's, let's, let's put our elements into those classes and I think that will become a bit more apparent afterwards. So we'll have frequency lists and that would be bit frequency. So on, in that class we will be doing something like um, frequency lists will be getting what's over already there um, bit frequency if there is nothing there uh, we'll be returning an empty list and then what what we got here was either just this empty list or something that is already a list and has elements inside right in our case this would be the first time uh, you can you, we can imagine to be like that and then we'll just be appending the number that we got here so um, with all this that we did here we've only kind of went through the through the all the elements saw the number of bits that they have and put them into different lists and now they are all into different lists now what we want is to actually sort those um, those those different classes and 
we can do this by sort uh, defining a variable that we called sorted classes um, uh, or yeah let's let's just have it sorted frequencies and the sorted frequencies will be our sort on um, the frequency lists the keys so the keys would be basically uh, exactly what what we hashed here right the bit frequencies so when we have those we can sort them and now we will uh, have basically a list uh, I guess I can I can just say let's have a list out of that and I, I uh, just because I'm not sure how everything will look until now I'm just gonna run it quickly I want to see what's uh, what's our current stand so what's our issue here non type has no attribute append okay so um, I quickly googled it and it turns out that the way I was trying to to have my default value set if in the case there is non-existent is a bit wrong uh, you're supposed to be using something like this and it's kind of the same as uh, what I was doing here it's just basically a bit shorter and I guess that's how it, it works uh, it's, that's how it works with dictionaries so we will basically have our bit frequency and our default would be an empty key an empty list and then we will be appending the number so according and I guess is it did I oh no um, yeah okay for the first time since a lot, since quite some time, I see something like this written in Python. Anyway, uh, this should be this should be gone, and our output is definitely not what I was expecting. Bit for bit in binary. it is equal to one for the zero yes let's uh, let's shorten it up because I think we are having we are dealing with too much information right now let's have two and our output is still wrong um, Print me our frequency lists. Uh, and there is another tip never really use um, copy paste while programming. It always makes for errors. I know it's kind of dumb, but it actually works like that. <laughs> I kind of, when I first read it, I was like, no, maybe, maybe sometimes, but come on. And then with time, it's been it has proven to me that it's actually worse to use copy paste than not so what do we have uh, I think our key so our bit frequency is not uh, not being hmm. we're not getting the proper bit frequencies and I wonder why uh, I remember here we printed a bunch of zeros so I'm assuming I want to see how this looks like. Read me this binary num. I think this video would be a lot of new stuff for me, and I guess it will result in a big, uh, longer video. But I guess, yeah. What can you do? Um, definitely <laughs> not what I was expecting. So uh, what I was searching here. Did I? Oh, I definitely did something wrong. That's why we had to have it like this of course to format it and now we would be getting our results we would be getting both of them in the um, one 
case here in the one class, right? Okay. I'll just leave these and I'll actually go back and uh, put the initial array. So I can run the code again just to make sure we get what we were expecting. I want to see the return value. The return value would give us the 0, 1, 2 and 3. Those are the, class, the classes, right? So we are at the at the point where um, where we are more or less, as you can see here, we already have them in separate classes. So now what we should be doing is taking each of those classes, sorting them inside. Once they are sorted, and I kind of see them already sorted for some weird reason, but I will still sort them and kind of append them one to the to the other. Um, how will we do this? Well, we can do this uh, in different ways, I guess, but um, I would do something like for class and I already prepare our alt array for class in, or not even class, let's say for frequency in our in sorted frequencies and now we'll have basically our outer array and we will append to the outer array we would append what is in this frequency list and then we'll be getting exactly this frequency and this is basically a list um, and I guess I don't want to append a list of course, um, what I would do is basically would be this, and now I'll say uh, out is out plus, and this will basically just put them one next to the other. I think that's that's how it works. Let's quickly just try it out. Printing an array that has one two plus an array that has three four. I think at least this is how it works in native Python. Uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, we are getting all those classes one after the other according to our sorted keys and for each of the classes uh, we are getting all the values and appending them to the next one, uh, to the previous one basically. Yeah? This one was appended to the none, then this one was appended to it, then this one was appended to it. And the only thing, the only thing that's left here would be to sort them. So we know what, what we get here is also sorted amongst themselves. And this, in effect, oops, and of course I have to return the out, um, should theoretically give us the answer. All right, uh, let's have it as an empty array. Because, uh, yeah, you cannot really start appending on the first uh, element. And as you can see, we have our accepted answer. Now, I kind of see it a bit long-ish when it comes to runtime, but maybe I'm wrong. Like we only, we go once over the whole array. Of course, we convert once here. Um, and yeah, every time for each of the bits and probably there's a better way to do this. This is the killer here because we're having a runtime of N in the size of the array. And I don't know how many bits, probably uh, 32 bits so 32 times n I guess it is it is still a uh, a scalar so maybe you can ignore that I don't know and then here again uh, we are going to classes this is something less than n uh, the classes would still be something that uh, that um, will continue to rise with the amount of uh, yeah different different integers but I'm not sure how it will even rise. For sure though, we are getting at least n plus something that's less than n, probably something like logarithmically, I guess. Uh, but yeah, then, uh, you, you should definitely, if you want to really get the answer for this part, um, you should probably, um, yeah, do, do kind of know some math and uh, do a, a bit more thinking than just like uh, shooting um, just blindly. But I think at least 
we have our working algorithm and I think it was a lot of fun. And yeah, we did it in the first time, uh, try. So that's, that's also pretty nice. Um, do I still have any prints somewhere? Why don't I, I maybe that was the very last uh, run that I had before submitting. So what did I learn? I learned that using the set default method, uh, when I, uh, I'm not sure that, uh, there is any element from the very beginning, um, is very useful. I will read on that and see if, uh, if uh, it comes with a penalty and what should I use in, in these type of scenarios because I see them come more and more often, right? You're starting to map and you don't have any base values here. So I don't want to be using cycles, a lot of cycles at least if, if uh, there's a better way. Um, but I'll, I'll first read on that. It was pretty cool. Uh, also, binary representation of uh, integers or whatever pretty easy, I guess. Uh, you're working with strings afterwards, which is also always kind of convenient in Python, I see. Um, yeah, and then you basically this was another algorithm where I got to experiment with this new idea of working with dictionaries and hash maps. And I kind of find it pretty cool. I know all the, more or less all the uh, hard questions afterwards will have to deal with some sort of mapping into hash maps. So it's good to start practicing on that. And I'm actually already kind of motivated uh, to continue doing that. So I hope you guys also try and solve these type of questions. This one was pretty fun. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.